Hey guys, we're back for the long overdue part two on this Toyota Corolla, where now we're gonna turn our attention to the interior. This vehicle hasn't been cleaned in the eight years since the customer purchased it. Part one, we tackled the exterior where we had a major issue of mold and mildew that had etched into the clear. And now we're turning our attention to this interior. This is an older customer and it's difficult for him to keep up with his vehicle. So we have a large amount of leaves because the customer lives in the woods food crumbs, body oils, dirt, and residue that is just over every surface from glass, plastics, leather, and carpets. So we're going to focus starting in the back and just clean everything out, get started vacuuming, and get this interior transformed for our customer. It looks like we have some impossible carpet that we need to deal with, which that's just a fancy terminology to say it's a pain in the to clean. We've got a lot of dust that has accumulated, especially in our tight nooks and crannies. Our plastics are faded from UV rays and they're just kind of dull in appearance. But let's give it a little bit A2D magic. So sometimes I will start in the front and work my way around the vehicle if there's not a lot of heavy soil in it. But when we've got a lot of dirt that we need to suck up and agitate out of our carpets, I'm actually gonna start in the back and work my way forward. We're gonna push our seats up as far forward as they can on the seat track for the driver and passenger seats. And that's going to give us access to all of the tight spaces along our seat and along our console. We're also gonna use a drill brush. You can see I'm kind of making a little bit of a dust storm right here. I haven't cleaned my plastics at this point because I know I'm gonna make a big old mess with this drill brush, but we have so much dirt and dust deeply embedded in our carpets, especially with impossible carpets, you want to make sure that you are utilizing agitation or stiff brushes to really pull all that dirt up to the surface. It's gonna make your vacuum step easier. And then when you do extract your carpets, should you need to extract, it's going to give you better results. I'm also using a trick that one of you passed on to me, and that's actually a wheel brush. I'm using that to agitate along the side of the seat. That is what's great about this channel. You guys teach me as much as I teach you. So thanks to those of you who shared that tip. It's been a fantastic one. But now that we've gotten the bulk of the dirt up from our carpets, we're gonna turn our attention to our plastics. And I will use a detailing brush to dust and vacuum simultaneously. This really decreases the amount of time and effort it takes to clean your plastics when you get to this step. I'm also using various attachments for my vacuum. I'm using just a standard rigid wet dry vac, but I have a long crevice attachment, a short crevice attachment, and kind of your standard nozzle that you would have at a car wash. For large areas like this, especially our back trunk carpet, you can very quickly vacuum up the debris, but you really wanna utilize your crevice attachments just because it's gonna give you more concentration to the airflow and more suction and be able to pull up a lot of the dirt that might be more deeply embedded in your carpets. So you don't just wanna have one attachment when vacuuming, really utilize a variety of tools to get the best kind of results. Quick question for you. To dress or not to dress the spare tire? Hmm? And for those of you that have leather seats, one simple step that most people overthink, make sure you're getting in there and really pulling those seams apart to make sure that you vacuum up all the stitching. So as we're working our way back, we're on our fourth attachment and this is actually the dust attachment. Great for vacuuming up larger plastics. We're gonna remove our headrest. That will make it easier for us to clean our glass when we get to that step. And we're gonna use my car blower and actually blow as much dirt as possible forward. This is why we started in the back. We're gonna work our way forward now. We're gonna pull our seats as far back as they can go. And now we're gonna be able to focus our attention on the front seats.
This is what makes working with impossible carpets so annoying. You can vacuum everything and it looks fantastic and then come in with your drill brush and it's like you didn't do anything at all. It agitates all of the dirt that was just deeply embedded in the carpets kind of stuck in there, especially pine needles and grass, they're the worst. But you just feel like you're constantly having to go over the carpets to get as much of the dirt up as possible. We're dealing with a little bit of sticky dash on this front dash, and that's basically where the glue that they use to put the dash together is starting to break down from excessive heat. It happens a lot with vehicles that are stored outside, but we also have a lot of just stickiness in general. Food crumbs that are just kind of tarred and feathered onto all of our plastics. It's making it really difficult to actually use my normal method of detailing brush and vacuum it up. They just don't want to budge. So we're really going to have to capitalize upon our cleaners, our brush, and our blower once we get to cleaning all these plastics because there's just so many crumbs that are just stuck on this plastic. I just want to point something out. This is the one side and the one section that we haven't vacuumed. And all I've done is vacuum. And this is the kind of difference that we are making. Detail brush, vacuum, just taking our time and being thorough. It doesn't require much to be able to keep up with your vehicle. Two tools, a vacuum and a detail brush is really all you need for consistent maintenance. Vacuuming all of your plastics in your tight spaces and keeping your carpets clean to the point where you don't have to do an extraction. But lucky for this customer, he came here. This one's gonna be really satisfying to clean and I'm gonna feel really good when it is all done. There is so much dirt in these mats and carpets. You can barely see the Corolla writing on these mats. But because the customer hasn't cleaned out his interior for a while, once we lifted up this mat, we discovered a bigger issue. So this whole carpet down here is soaking wet. After doing some research, this is a common problem for Corollas and it could be that the air conditioner drainage is blocked. And if people aren't lifting their mats, they're not going to know and what can happen is you're gonna have mold, mildew, and a really musty odor inside your interior. And that explains, I think, some of the smell. So whenever you find water on the interior of a cabin, first you wanna make sure that you investigate and try to discover the source of the water. And secondly, you want to try to do everything you can to remove the water. You wanna extract everything, let it dry out properly with blowers and fans, and just try to get everything as dry as possible so that way you don't have mold and mildew that could quickly overtake the interior of the cabin and make it honestly unsafe to drive in. We were fortunate that I didn't discover any sort of mildew or mold with this and we were able to rectify the issue with a good extraction and properly drying everything out. So we are finally all done with the vacuum step. We need to extract our carpets and mats, it's especially because we had that leak um, that has gone down into the driver's side carpet. Uh, we really need to make sure that we prevent any sort of mustiness, mold, mildew, etc. So a good extraction, I think, is going to really go a long way in helping the interior of this cabin just smell clean. We will scrub all of our plastics, all these high touch areas where it literally, I can't even scrape it off with my fingernail, it's that bad. So we'll probably end up using um, some magic erasers, some really stronger cleaners, but you don't wanna to go too strong that you actually damage or stain your plastic. So you wanna make sure you have a dedicated cleaner that's gonna be able to do the job, but you don't wanna incur damage um, along the way. So once we do our glass, our plastics, we'll get our leather seats clean. What we will apply is a interior ceramic protectant that will make it easier for the customer to maintain. It'll give it a little bit of hydrophobic, some UV protection. That's really the most significant thing that we need to do for this interior cabin is just to kind of put a little bit of conditioning back into our plastics. They are pretty faded from the sun just from being outside and, and too much heat on the interior. Our front dash, our back plastic, they're really faded. So we're going to put a dressing down that has UV protection on it, but we're also not going to do like a solvent-based dressing, like an armor all or anything like that. We're gonna be using a water-based dressing that's going to help prevent any sort of uh, solvents from gassing off because a lot of times when you have really dirty or hazy glass, um, the culprit is really the solvents or the dressings that you're putting on your interior because as those solvents gas off, they have nowhere to go but your glass and that's why they get so hazy so quickly. So 
If you're struggling with clean glass and your glass gets hazy very quickly after cleaning, uh, start to really examine what you're putting on the interior of your vehicle. Maybe it's an air freshener, maybe it's uh, whatever cleaners you're using for your plastics, etc. Um, if they're solvent based or, or not a water based product, a lot of times um, that's what will happen. We've got a lot of work left to do, but honestly, this made a huge dent and a huge impact. Just two very simple tools, just taking about two hours to vacuum. And now we can just dial in all of the details. So well, let's get moving. Because of the funky odor on this interior, we're going to use Shine Supply Super Spot for our heavy stains, as well as their carpet cleaner. These products are very affordable, easy to use. They're going to give you fantastic results, and they smell like an orange creamsicle. We're also going to use Koshemi Ulex. This is a tar and adhesive remover that works really great at spot removal and cleaning heavy stains, especially on our stitching between the carpet cleaner, Ulex, agitating with our drill brush, and then a thorough extraction with the Aqua Provac with hot water in it. You can see we're getting really great results. It's not a heavy residue, um, but with carpets that have heavier soiling like this, don't just think you're gonna go one time around the mat and that's sufficient. I find that sometimes you have to go in every single angle to kind of lift the pile, to lift the dirt in that angle because mats can get kind of matted down over time with just heavy soiling. And so make sure that you are rinsing thoroughly all the residue that you might have to do. But we went four times around this mat and we're still pulling up dirt. But by the end of it, it came up nice and clean, smelled fantastic. I was really happy with how all these products performed. So while vacuuming impossible carpet might be a big old pain in the butt, extracting it can be a whole nother story. I find that they actually extract pretty easily and they dry very quickly. So although we put down a heavy amount of water on these carpets to pull up as much of the dirt as possible, they were dry in about an hour after putting our fan blower on and turning the heat on the interior. So that's a win for the impossible carpets, pretty much the only one. Now that our carpets and mats are done, we're going to turn our attention to our plastics. And for that, we're going to use Vonix Sintra. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite cleaners for interior plastics. It helps kind of reset the germ levels on your interior. And I could only imagine what kind of Petri dish was going on in this interior after not being cleaned for eight years. Between Sintra, my detail brushes, using my car blow and microfibers, as well as even a dental pick, we were able to just fine tune clean this area that had a huge amount of dirt and crust that was just kind of caked on. To deep clean all of our textured plastics, we're gonna use the Work Stuff Detailing Mitt. This has a felt material that does a really nice job of aggressively, but not aggressively, cleaning all of the heavy buildup that it can accumulate on your high touch areas, your steering wheel, your turn signals. nasty but we are making good progress we're using the work stuff interior mitt Sintra from Vonix this is a bactericidal cleaner we really want something that's going to go after the germs if you've ever detailed pretty nasty interior and gone over any of your turn signals I want you to just notice we didn't remove any of the lettering. If I had to use the magic eraser or a really strong cleaner, 
we could have potentially removed that. Is it the end of the world? No. But if the customer wants to be able to know which direction to turn his signals and his lights on, that makes a big difference. But especially high touch areas, this is my first time working with this interior mitt. And I like it. I think it's a, a little bit more scrubby aggressive than a auto fiber scrub ninja. I'm not gonna say that it is better, it's different, it's longer fibers. And it's designed that you can kind of put your hand in there, but I am not doing that in this moment. I'm trying to kind of keep it from accumulating too much dirt. But even Some of you may be thinking, how well are these cleaners really working? She's really having to scrub and go over these multiple times to get all the dirt off. There's eight years of dirt on this steering wheel. So be patient, give it time, let the products work, but we're not damaging the plastics. That's what's important. All right, let's wipe her off and dry her off. Especially when working around electronics, using the car blower helps blow out all of that liquid to just be able to safely work around electronics. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend compressed air of some sort. So another tool that you have to be careful with it, but it works really well on tight spaces, believe it or not, is a dental pick. Right now, this is like car plaque. I made up a new thing, car plaque. This is what I'm gonna call it from now on. Oh, it's brilliant. You heard it here first, folks. The bulk of the dirt on this interior honestly were on our plastics and Sintra made quick work to quickly clean all of that heavy buildup of dirt. Now let's turn our attention to our leather seats. I'm gonna use my mother's crevice brush as well as the Work Stuff Interior Detail Mitt and Vonix Higgy Quadro. This is a really great leather cleaner that I've been enjoying lately. It has a nice long work time, really great foaming capabilities that are gonna help lift the dirt to the surface. It doesn't dry out on you quickly, but it leaves behind just a nice even finish. It's not streaky or sticky. And it gave us a really nice clean prep surface for us to be able to apply our interior ceramic once everything was all said and done. And this is one area that often gets overlooked, but make sure you're also cleaning your seat buckle. Eight years of locking and unlocking the seat buckle is gonna have a lot of body oils and dirt buildup over time. You should. Some ways that I become more efficient with interior detailing is that for vacuuming, I will start in the back and work my way forward. But when it comes to cleaning carpets, mats, and seats, I will start in the front and work my way around the vehicle. So that way, if I have any sort of overspray, I'm not having to constantly go back and redo my work. But with vacuuming, don't think you're just going to vacuum once and be done. So make sure you don't put that vacuum away because you're gonna create crumbs when cleaning your plastics and leather that you're gonna have to go back over it again. Fresh up from Koshemi, this is gonna really help kind of put the nail in the coffin on some of that stinky smell. All right, final day, final day. I'm gonna finish this baby up. So we are on the home stretch with our Corolla. This has been quite a lengthy process. For those of you that might think that you can get this done in a day, God bless your heart. Um, we actually started off the first day, took about two hours just to do the wash, the wheels, 
Then we came back the next day, spent about six hours doing more decontamination, wet sanding, compounding, polishing, uh, getting the paint cleaned up. And then we spent about, mm, I'd say eight hours on the interior yesterday. Um, that included vacuuming, shampooing, cleaning our leather, cleaning all of our plastics, um, buttoning up our door jams, things like that. And so today, all that's really left is we need to apply our ceramic spray coating on the paint, and then we're going to clean this hazy glass. So if you own a sedan, pay attention. You definitely need one of these tools. So we have our handle. Looks like we have a grippy Velcro. Then we have our reach portion. So this will adhere to this. I like a so. All right, so we've got a foam back. We've got our Velcro. We can remove it. And then we have our glass towel. And for our glass cleaner, we're using the best Stoner Car Care Invisible Glass Glass Cleaner. There's a ton of different glass cleaners on the market. I have tried dozens over dozens and still just keep coming back to this stuff because it works so incredibly well and it's actually really affordable. We've got our on fiber reach towel. getting down all the way down, even up here, we were able to kind of adjust the head with all the different angles. So I like the design behind it because it really gets into all of those tight spaces that sometimes that's really the biggest struggle on dirty glass. So here's our reach tool with invisible glass. Another great tool to clean glass that has a heavy buildup of film on it is a wet magic eraser. Now you don't wanna use this on glass that has tint, but it does a nice job of scrubbing off all that heavy film, follow up with your invisible glass and a microfiber, but it's not the most comfortable. So this is where I really enjoy those reach tools. The final tool that we're going to demonstrate is the stoner reach tool. This is probably the one that we're most familiar with because it's been on the market for so long and they do actually have an updated version of this. I find that the original sometimes can struggle with getting the glass streak free. It does a good job of getting in all those tight spaces, but it can leave a little bit of streakiness behind. So I actually like using these two reach tools together. Do your initial scrub with the stone reach tool, gets in all those tight spaces really well, and then do your final wipe with the reacher tool, and that gives you streak free results. And shazam, we got streak free back glass. We were able to get all the way down here all in our tight spaces. And I didn't have to wedge myself into that back section. And in fact, we were able to get a little bit back here that sometimes you just can't get to. So that did a really great job, very quickly, very comfortably. Now let's try our windshield wow. So with this unit, you actually have to clean the inside and the outside simultaneously. So we're going to spray the outside because you need the lubrication for the magnets to glide easily. And then we're going to put our interior magnet here and then our exterior one here. Whoop. And that's what happens to me every time it falls off. I'm sure there's something I'm doing wrong. The power four. It is a really strong magnet. I can tell it's cleaning the glass. I mean, it's dirty. It just, it's not the most user-friendly interface. Yeah. Maybe up and down was the way to go. And we're back. Well, that was the most successful run I've had. Personally, I don't want to have to watch a YouTube video to have to figure out how to use a tool to clean glass. It shouldn't be rocket science. So if 
for that fact. I don't normally speak negatively against products. This was sent to me to test out and I think I'm doing something wrong. But again, I'm looking for something that's gonna be user friendly and I feel like this just requires too much effort to have to try to master. I'm curious to know if any of you have used this tool before and maybe have some tips on what I might be doing wrong or how I could make it easier to use because I feel like I'm missing something. It shouldn't be this complicated to use. But for now, we're going to put it off to the side, finish up our glass, and now we're going to apply our interior dressings. Now, when it comes to leather, I'm not a huge fan of leather conditioners. Sometimes they can leave behind a greasy, streaky, and even sometimes a slippery feeling afterwards. So I like to use DIY Detail, their interior ceramic. Now this is a product, it's a maintenance product. You can use it about every six months. You can use this on hard surfaces as well as fabrics. It's going to give you a heavy dose of UV protection as well as some hydrophobic protection. That way it's gonna be easier to maintain your vehicle. But for some of our plastics that they're hit with more UV rays from the sun that are maybe a little bit more dried out, we're gonna use Shine Supply Clean and Shine. For those of you that maybe you just have a light layer of dust, you're looking to just maintain your vehicle, you can use this product to clean, dress, and protect your vehicle all in once. So I like to use a product like this on our door panels and the kind of the exterior areas of our plastic that need to be enriched. But we're all done. We're finally all done. Let's take a final look at the outcome of our detail. So let's be honest. When you first saw this vehicle at the beginning of part one, did you think that we'd be able to land here? Because honestly, <laughs> I didn't. We had a heavy buildup of mold and mildew that had etched into the clear. We had to do one of the heaviest decons I've ever done as well as wet sanding, compound polish. But then after doing that and applying our Apex BC2 ceramic spray coating, the gloss and shine off of this paint, honestly, it kind of really just helps take your eye away from some of the defects on the paint. When you look at this vehicle now, you just see a beautiful green appearance, a clean car. Once you get up close, yeah, you can still see some of the defects, but all in all, this vehicle looks transformed. And honestly, I think the customer is gonna be really happy with the end result. But do you wanna know what the customer thinks? Well, stay tuned, because maybe we'll be able to share a little bit of that at the end of this video. Practically speaking, one of the biggest improvements that we made on this vehicle was honestly cleaning the glass. It was so hazy that it was dangerous for the customer to drive around at night. So we were able to deep clean our glass, but this interior turned out so good. We used our Shine Supply Carpet Cleaner and Super Spot for our carpets and mats, Vonix Higi Quadro and DIY Detail Interior Ceramic for all of our plastics and high touch areas. We deep cleaned our plastics with Vonix Sintra and then applied Shine Supply Clean and Shine to dress all of our plastics. Finished up with Koshemi FU, fresh up, to remove any of the odor on the interior. And this thing looks years younger. Honestly, it looks pretty brand new on this interior. We are finally all done with our Toyota Corolla. We started off four days ago. It was a total of around 18 hours that we devoted to this. We had some smaller days, some broken up portions, but all in all, this was probably one of the worst condition vehicles that I've seen inside and out. And in around 18 hours, we were able to undo about eight years of neglect. So I'm tired. <laughs> I know the customer is gonna be really happy with the end result. We're gonna put the link to all the products that we use down below. I was really happy with how each and every one of them performed. Uh, the exterior looks fantastic. Interior smells and just looks like years have been taken off of the life of this vehicle. It honestly looks like new on the interior. So really happy with how everything performed. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about the products, the process, um, let me know down below and comment down below. What was your favorite part of this detail? For me, honestly, it was getting a little bit more experience with wet sanding and seeing all those grimy plastics cleaned and just everything looks so really nice on the inside. Where's my car? <laughs> it cleaned up really nice. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Oh, the colors come up really nicely. This is, this is the reason I bought the car in the first place. Good. Yeah.
Okay. See where you can get that off, but that's not a problem. I yeah. recognize that. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. No, it's not my pleasure. I appreciate it. Well, hopefully. Chelsea, dynamite. Dynamite? Dynamite, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. hopefully it things is. are going to be a lot easier for you to maintain moving forward. Gotcha. Hopefully, we see it back in, in a few months to keep up with things. If you have any issues, any questions, let me know. Thank you. And um, vice versa. If somebody, if somebody needs a testimonial, let me know and I'll go ahead and get Oh, for sure. Well, I'll have the car show now. It'll, it'll be much more. <laughs> much more appreciative well, and good. much more eloquent than me. Well, thank you, sir. I hope you had a no, good trip. Thank you. Glad thank you, you got back home safely. And so am I. It yeah. was, quite, it was quite, quite, a, uh, quite an adventure. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you the next detail. You know what to do over on the side. Have a great day.